Hey, I'm Alex Rackle from Board Game Co, and today I'm reviewing Ostia and the Pirates expansion. Now, this is a bit of a hybrid review, as Ostia has already been out for a bit, is already available, you can check out lots of information on it, and Pirates is the new expansion that is either soon to be or currently on Kickstarter, so everything here is prototype, rules, components, subject change, all of that, and this is an already finished game. But with that, I'll be talking about both of these, going into my thoughts on the, the base game, how that operates, the expansion, what it adds, but let's start with what Ostia is, which it is, it's a rondelle Mancala style game. The basic idea of the game is you're trying to get as many points as possible, which is, you know, a fairly common thing in games these days. But the way you get points is primarily, and not exclusively, but primarily by building various cities onto the board, utilizing your own player board over here, taking these cities, putting them onto the main board over here, building ships onto the board, and then collecting these amphors of wine, and then multiplying all those things you just did by your scoring reward marker over here that is going to be going up this track, and the higher this the reward marker goes, the more points points each of those things are worth. So that's a high level idea of what you're trying to do. Build ships, build cities, gather and forest. There are other things you can do for victory points, but those are going to be the big three. Past that, the turn selection in the game, the, uh, the what you do on your turn, is you're basically playing a bit of a Moncala style game. Over here on your player board, you're going to be gathering one sp bunch of ships from one spot, picking them up, and then dropping them off one at a time, going one, two, and taking the action of where you finish. So you pick up, drop, take the action. But before you do that, when you pick up ships, you're going to be generating resources in these regions around the board. There are going to be five different regions. You have these uh, papyrus over here, you have you have wood, you have corn, you have brick or steel, whatever it is, and then you have gold, each of them being used for different things, and when you pick up ships, you're going to go ahead and start by generating resources equal to the number of ships you pick up. So we're going to go ahead and gather some cubes over here, put them down into this region, because that's where you store and track the resources, and then going one, two, dropping off ships along the way, but then taking the action of where you ended up, which means as you go through the game, you're slowly but surely building up different selections of how ships operate on the board and what's going to be where and how you're going to be able to generate resources and which actions you can take as you slowly on your turn take this little man collar rondelle esque action to be able to define both the strength of your action and setting yourself up for the right action or the right sequence of back to back actions in the game. And those actions, to a large extent, are going to be the following. Let's start from the top right. We'll work our way around because they're going to give you the whole idea of the game. But before we cover that, I'd say the basic things you should know is ships on the board are going to be a good thing. You're going to start off with ships in Austria Harbor over here, and they're going to be moving along the board collecting rewards until they eventually get to the very end of the track over here, where they can get these very helpful large reward tiles over there. Which means you are trying to get ships onto the board, you are trying to move ships along, you're trying to go ahead and build buildings, and the other actions will kind of fill in there. So, once again, starting from the beginning over here, you're going to take the first action over here is moving ships. When you take a move ship action, you're going to take one of the ships and move it along one node, Although you can pay the papyrus over here, the paper, to be able to go ahead and move more nodes if you want, which can be very helpful at times. So you're trying to move ships along over there, you're trying to move to specific spots. The three things you're going to want to know, or I guess four things, is when you land on these tiles, and only when you land them, you're going to get the resources shown. When you pass by these markers, you're going to take them off the board, getting the bonuses on those markers. When you pass by these little trading ports, that gives you the option later to build a building on any trading port you passed. And then lastly, you have these over here, which when you finally get to the end of a route, these unlock either, well, primarily victory, uh, end game victory points, either bumping up your scoring for amphoras, cities, or ships, or alternatively just bumping up your reward marker one, two, three entirely. And these, by the way, or the entire board for that matter, is random in the way things are placed out. So again, moving ships along the board, that's basically what you're trying to do. Then we have building ships. When you build ships, you pay wood, and that's going to be this action here, and you can build as many ships as you're able to. Your small ships, whenever you build a small ship over here, is going to go on to any of these six ports and when you build a large ship it replaces one of your ships and that bumps that ship up into Austria but only if you have no ships in this initial sector you have to have cleared your ships out over there in order to do that then we have over here this spot down here this spot's going to generate well it's going to generate corn but it's going to when you take the action here you're going to be able to buy these cards there's going to be a market of these cards available to purchase each showing you the corn cost and then sometimes another cost as well those are going to give you amphoras when you go ahead and buy them the, the extra cost will give you the extra amphora, then you have the, uh, the the resources on the center of the card you're going to gather, and you're going to get the symbols on the bottom, which is going to be one of the other ways you score points, because these little symbols that you're crossing on the board give you lions or horses, and these give you, well, men or women, I guess, over here on the cards, and then a set of any four of those is going to be worth 12 points at the end of the game. So trying to get sets of all four resources, some of which you need to get by selling the corn to the market or gathering those cards, and some of which you need to get by traversing the board. Then we have the building action. When you take the building action, you're going to 
to be paying the building costs on this mark over here and going up, building as many as you like, but then going ahead and specifically placing them only on ports that you've crossed. And that's where the types of buildings over here, there's going to be end game benefits. So for example, this tile over here will give you two buildings, two extra buildings to score at the end of the game. So if you've gotten your marker to over here, that's an 18 point tile right there because it's going to go ahead and magnify by your current nine points. Then there's gonna be trading tiles, which doing a trading action, which we haven't gotten to, these actions over here, you pay money and you can trade in to be able to get those different things. There's gonna be a bunch of these options over here. And by the way, you're only seeing a small subset of the tiles. In general, there are more tiles on the, in the game than will be in any individual game. But they're basically going to give you either end game scoring or in game trading for the most part. There are some that give you an immediate one time benefit. Then we have finally over here, not finally, but we have the trading action. The trading action is going to allow you to go ahead and trade in uh, based on these various spots on the board that you have, but also to buy these honor cards over here. These are going to be five cards that give players up to 12 points, or well, 12 points specifically. You have to pay four money while taking that action, pay 12 points over 12, we get, get 12 points, but you have to have achieved one of these things over here. So for example, you have to have achieved four ships, you have to have achieved four on fours, you have to have five rewards on this track over here in order to get one of these cards over there. And then the last action is kind of a catch-all action. The last action over here, when you start here, you take one of these four actions, and then whenever you end up, that's where you take another action again. So it gives you a new way to get actions when you start here, and then also if you end here, you get to take one of those four actions. But it doesn't generate resources. That's the core idea of, well, everything happening here. You're trying to play this little Rondell game, trying to play a little Mancala engine as you try to navigate where things go to most optimally help you as you try to move your ships forward towards the end game to be able to get what you need out of these well these end markers over here whatever these trading ports along the way you want to get access to managing the resources and the set collection over here all while trying to build ships trying to build uh, more buildings and trying to collect them for us while moving up your scoring marker in order to score as many points as possible that's the base game of Austria and then we're going to go ahead and talk about the pirate expansion and then I'll lump my review into separate areas too but the pirate expansion adds a bunch of new things uh, technically modular but not really you're supposed to interweave them they all work nicely together Together. but to start off with it adds this little building track over here these buildings over here give you a new way to utilize buildings and we didn't really talk about it a lot but whenever you place down a marker on a spot you have to take the building from that spot and the symbol doesn't really matter just whatever building it is in that location and you put it onto your board into one of a bunch of different spots that give you little rewards for building buildings whether a one-time reward whether you generate more resources discounts on building ships or buildings you get these various rewards for putting these buildings down now in the pirates expansion you have a new thing you can do with these you can pay the resources shown on any of these spots over here and it is based on player count you pay the resources you put this down you take the token and now you have whatever this is look at this i'm now generating an extra victory point for every ship i have in the game so those give you a bunch of in-game benefits or end game benefits to go ahead and collect and again there are a bunch more than they actually well have spots for them there will be a random assortment game to game the pirates expansion also is going to go ahead let's see what we want to talk about next the pirates expansion is going to add well pirates and events and treasure chests that's going to be this whole module here where you may have noticed this pirates over here along the board there's black and red pirates on the board the red pirates further along the black pirates a little easier earlier up and then whenever you encounter a pirate you cannot actually go to a spot with a pirate or go past the spot with a pirate unless you fight the pirate which means now you have a new resource in the game that are soldiers that are well weapons there's weapons and legionnaires so weapons basically are going to be a new thing you can get that whenever you go to the trading spot on your player board over here you can also now spend gold to buy weapons so you can go ahead and convert a bunch of gold into a bunch of weapons placing them down onto your player board and you can utilize those when you reach a pirate because black pirates always cost two to, co to conquer wherever you are on this track versus red pirates start at four and they go up to six depending on how many treasure chests have been consumed which means you want to try to gather those weapons because you're going to need them to conquer the pirates. The good news, aside from what I just did over there, the good news is going to be that you have these legionnaires over here, where the legionnaires can count as weapons, you have to pay a cost to get them, but once you build a legionnaire, they're going to both magnify your treasure chest scoring at the end of the game, but they're also going to give you points to be able to take on the pirates. So a four strength red pirate, because I have three legionnaires now, only costs me one weapon at the moment to take out, because I have built in and invested into those legionnaires, which will also help magnify my treasure chest scoring. Speaking of which, the treasure chest scoring is basically going to be, uh, you're going to get one treasure 
treasure chests for every black pirate, uh, two treasure chests for every red pirate, and whenever you resolve an event, which we haven't talked about yet, whenever you resolve an event, the treasure chests are going to pay you a little bit of a dividend of gold, and at the end of the game, they're worth between three to eight points, depending on the legionnaires you've built. As far as those events, basically, you're going to have these little areas over here where you have these event tracks uh, filled up with um, treasures over here, and whenever you clear one of these little small buckets, you're going to resolve the current event. So, for example, when you clear this first bucket from treasure chest, you're going to resolve this event, which currently, and again, these are variable, you shuffle them, there are a bunch more than these, but you're going to resolve this event, which says that whoever has the most treasure chests is going to get rid is going to get rid of a disgrace, and whoever has the least is going to gain a disgrace, which is where we talk about the fact that we haven't talked about the new disgrace mechanic. There's a few ways it inter intermingles with the game, but one of the things that the disgrace mechanic does, or the starting base list, is you get a bunch of these black cubes over here, you're going to start the game with some of them, and have the opportunity to earn them by not having done as well in these events, and they're each worth negative seven victory points, although you can pay seven money to get rid of them, as well as a bunch of other ways to get rid of them. Which means over here, when you're looking at this event, this event gives you an opportunity to collect treasure chests to get rid of a disgrace, or alternatively to gather the disgrace if you have the least, and you can resolve these events one at a time as you go through the game, as you slowly defeat, as you slowly take out those uh, the treasure chests from the various pirates. Which brings us to, I think, the last thing, there's a bunch of things over here, but I think the last thing the new expansion adds is going to be these little tiles over here. You're going to group up your home city tile and your supporter tile, there's again a large assortment of them, you're going to create little groups at the beginning of the game, and then in reverse player order, players are going to select a randomly put together group of tiles that give you a new way to score victory points and a new little benefit you get in game. So for example, just these two, and there are a lot, but just these two, these are going to start you off with three disgrace, and when taking an order card, you can gain two additional resources of the type indicated in the center of the card. When you buy these cards, you're doubling up on the resources or getting two additional resources of the type on the center of the card. And this, for the end of the game, is whenever you repel pirates, you may pay three gold to place a cube on this card, and each cube on this card is worth six victory points at the end of the game. So if you can stop, uh, stock up on a little extra gold and use those when defeating pirates, you can get a bunch of extra victory points. And there's a large assortment of those tiles, but they all group up to give you an in-game benefit and an end-of-game scoring, but at the cost of some disgrace that you'll have to get rid of along the way. And that's basically how you play through Austria. I didn't talk about end, how the game ends, but basically in the base game, the, end, the game ends when a player has built all their ships, when a player has built all their cities, when a players have completely gotten to the end of these four tracks, when a player has gotten to the uh, top of the reward track, uh, and then the Pirates expansion has a new way where when the treasure chests run out, is going to be a new way that the game ends. And that is basically Austria as well as the Pirates expansion, which means it's time for my review, starting off with ease of play, and I'll say that there's a decent amount of l information going on here, but I would not quantify it as, inf as information overload. It is pretty straight straightforward as far as the teach and the how everything makes sense. There's a lot of things that you know you have to to know what this symbol means, what that does there, what that does there. There's just a lot of stuff, but it's not an overwhelming amount of stuff, and it's all very simple to teach and get people up and running, just to remember to not miss out on the small details here, there, and wherever. As far as game time, the game, well, it does, it does depend to a large extent if you're playing with the Pirates expansion. I think it elongates the game a bit if you're playing with, you know, the, the player count will matter, but I'd say you can get a game of Austria in as low as an hour if you're playing with two people who are moving fast, but I'd say a typical game is probably closer to the 90 minutes to 120 minutes zone. Uh, there's a lot going on here. It's fairly straightforward, but it all... It does take some time to resolve it all. As far as what I like, don't like, and can see others not liking, starting off with what I like, which is everything in this game is important. You want to do everything first because you want to get that done so you can get that done so you can get that done, which means this entire little player board over here is a tempting puzzle of how can you get all of the stuff done that you need because you, you can't, you can't. You're trying to get everything done, but it just takes time, effort, and energy to be able to resolve all of it, and you're trying to get your ships out because you need ships out to be able to well, move along the board and collect bonuses. These end game bonuses are super important if you can get in multiple ships here, there's a decent chance you'll have a good chance of winning if you get more ships than the rest of the opponents, unless of course they're focusing on 7,000 other things because there are 7,000 other things you can do in this game. There's just This is a straight up uh, victory point salad game in the sense that everything you do is going to earn you points, but how you try to combine those things is where you're going to achieve your own personal you know, pathway forward, your strategy, your strategic uh, direction forward in this game as you try to figure out are you trying to take a bunch of treasure chests, are you trying to conquer the pirates, and again the, the pirates adds a whole new element to the game that isn't necessary, you can play the base game and enjoy it just fine, but it gives you more stuff to focus on as far as are you trying to gather these new buildings over here? Are you trying to gather treasure chests? Are you trying to build your buildings and ramp them as fast as possible? When you build your last building or your last ship, you get two full rewards and getting your marker on this track very high up, you can get a bunch of stuff at a lower scoring points, or you can get fewer stuff at higher scoring points, and those are both viable options forward. Trying to figure out which pathways on the board best suit you and your strategy versus which pathways others are taking, because at the end of the day, if you're chasing people for the same rewards in these tracks, because these rewards 
rewards are limited over here. So if you're chasing people and getting to the end, the first person gets an extra benefit. So trying to be mindful, you're not always playing second place on this track as you ramp up your ship and try to get across the harbors over here. That's going to be another thing you're trying to take into account, all while you try to figure out just what you know what your own unique starting cards are going to give you. Because the starting cards in Austin, the Pirates expansion, those cards give you a direction forward as far as how you're going to try to score points. It's no longer the completely open-ended bucket this game starts off as. Otherwise, you have a direction and incentive and a pathway forward. The variable board setup is an absolute ton of information that is different game to game. These these over here are mixed up. They're always the same. I wish there were more of these, but they're they're always the same for in play. But then past that, you also have you also have the um, the various all these other spots on the board that are just different as far as where bonuses go, where these trade portals go, where these and the, the cities go over here. That you're going to be trying to get uh, you know influence in uh, these over here are going to be variable. The events are going to be variable. The combinations of these that you can choose from and the way they're paired up is going to be variable. Basically, everything in this game is different, giving you a different experience game to game. And I think the only things that are really the same every game are these honor cards are the same every game, as well as these over here. Although it is worth noting, the Pirates expansion I believe comes with two more expansions. I think it's merch and travelers if I'm not sure two little modules that unfortunately I didn't have access to so I don't have a chance to play those or talk with those but I believe one of those gives you personal honor cards or something along those lines I just I saw notes and snippets but I don't even know what it includes but there's a lot of things going on to the variable setup and the game is because of all the way these things intermingle but they intermingle smoothly the game is brain burnery not brain burnery the game is interweaving and rewarding without being brain burning. It doesn't have that mental weight, but it does give you so much to consider because you're trying to figure out how you're going to combine everything or which action you're going to take first, how you're going to set up your harbor and getting more ships into your harbor to be able to take stronger actions, but being sure that you're never ever stuck in a bad situation, especially because that end game can creep up on you as you play. But basically, there's a lot of ways to score points. There's multiple paths to victory. There's variable setup, and there's a lot of things to consider as far as what you're going to try to chase to get your source of victory points in the game, and it all does that just in a very, very easy to understand and play through experience, but that's very rewarding for the actual end result. As far as things I don't like in the game, first of all, the rewards, uh, the rewards climbing together, like this track over here, and the way these rewards climb together, but you, you know, you move these up, and then everything scores more points. I almost wish there was more of a variable way that the, the rewards stacked up, that you can get more points for other things. And there are various bonuses you can get, and some of these tiles will give you bonuses as well. They're not on the board right now, but some of them do. So there are things that will give you a way that ships are worth more than buildings, but I will say that I kind of wish that the full track, like, like right now, you just move, move your rewards a marker up and get more points on everything it's just a straight up you know it's incentivized to do that across the board i almost wish there was more of a way to invest in different things it's just it all climbs together which feels like it should be a more of a variable marker to a degree i'll say that the game can be a little ap prone as much as the game is not brain burnery on you uh, taking your individual turn if you haven't planned out your turn the game can be very fast and snappy if your turn is ready to go if by the time it comes back to you you know exactly what you're doing you can go through it you can be like great i go ahead and gather four wood i move this here i take a trade action i get two weapons I buy a Legionnaire, boom, I'm done. But sometimes the game is not that smooth because sometimes you don't have your turn prepped or somebody else just just went ahead of you on the ship track taking that reward you were planning for and now you need to pivot and adjust your actions. And the game has a lot to think about. Again, even though it's not, even though the mental load is not overly taxing. This is not a Lacerda game or a food chain magnet or any of those kinds of experiences, but there is a lot to consider and you can have slowdown at times. As far as I can see others not liking, first of all, you can get stuck with no ideal options on your little Mancala engine over here. There will be times where you clumped up your board in a way that like four of your spots all go to the same area and it's not an action you're primed for, which means the one spot you're left is really an inefficient action. There will be times if you're not mindful of what you're doing as you go that you will be a little stuck on that player board and that's just not a fun moment in the game for it to happen. Again, advanced planning will mostly take care of that, but it will likely happen to you across the course of a game's here and there. I'll say that the game ends suddenly in a way that's a little bit too suddenly. This is not a game where it's like, hey, game end is triggered, everyone gets one more turn. No, it's game end is triggered, finish the round, and that's it. And in this game, that last turn can be so pivotal, so there is a little bit of a dance of trying to figure out whether you want to push end game because then at least you're in control and you know what to do and you've optimized around it, or when you want to lay off because you're trying to get as much done as possible. And in this game, end game can creep up on you pretty suddenly, so... It is one of those little delicate balances as far as how you try to be mindful of that. I'll say that there's not a lot of interaction in the game. There's a little bit of a racing element as far as moving up these tracks, trying to get ahead of other players as you go through this. But I will say that base game especially 
does not give you a ton of ways you interact with other players. The Pirates expansion does make it a bit more interactive. The Pirates expansion in general, because of the way that you have these rewards for the events, it forces you to be a bit more mindful of what the other players are doing, and even though you're not necessarily directly interacting, it does force you to chase some of the same things or go after the same things, which makes it feel a bit more interactive. But base game, I think, is lacking in interaction, and Pirates brings it to more of a, you know, standard Euro game. It's still not a heavily interactive experience, but it definitely is more so. And then that's kind of everything as far as the overall experience. I do want to include a direct note about my thoughts on the Pirates expansion before we move into my final thoughts. The Pirates expansion, to me, just adds more good things. I can't see a reason why I'd ever play without it. Well, I mostly can't see a reason why I would ever not play without it. The one downside of the Pirates expansion is it does force you to have to have the weapons you need, the Legionnaires you need, to be able to cross these rows of Pirates over here, which means if you don't want to deal with that little puzzle, then taking the Pirates expansion out and just going to the end of the board over here, that is, well, one of the benefits of the base game alone. But that's the only potential downside where you might have a preference of an experience. Past that, it just adds fun things. You can go out and fight pirates and gather treasure chests. Those treasure chests are going to be useful for scoring. You're going to give you points at the end of the game. You can build your legionnaires to give you more efficient ways to fight the pirates. You can try to invest in these city tiles. I love these starting bonuses. The fact that you get these variable starting bonuses that are glumped up to glue, grouped up together randomly, and there's a whole host of them, and they all are powerful and fun, and they're all giving you these little fun ways to gain points and get things in the game. Those, I absolutely love the way those impact in the game, but you need everything else to revolve around them because you have to deal with that through those disgrace tokens. You have new ways to get those buildings over there. There's just The Pirates Convention just adds good things to the game with the only limitation being the fact that the central track can slow down a bit, which also can slow down endgame too, depending on what you're doing or how you're resolving this over here. But it gives you a lot of things to consider without an, a lot of additional mental load. There's just you know a few, inter, few elements that move into the game that give you additional things to think about or go through as you play through it. I think the Pirates Convention is an excellent addition to the Austria game. Which brings us to my final thoughts on the game, and I think Ostia is a lot of fun. It is not a heavy game. It is a medium weight Euro game that has a Mancala mechanism as the core focus of the game, and then everything else just ties in nicely between all those elements. I've had a lot of fun playing this one. I've played it both regular Ostia, I've played the solo mode, I haven't talked to the solo mode, the solo mode's own little race against time. Not as much my jam, but certainly not the worst. As you have a solo mode, you have a, you know, a regular Ostia, I play with the Pirates expansion, and this just gives you a game that works well at a variety of player, player counts gives you a lot of ways to score points, a lot of ways to feel rewarded as you play through the game without being overly taxing on you. For me, this is a 4 out of 5. The Pirates expansion is possibly brings it to a 4.5 out of 5. I'm a little hesitant to give that the Pirates expansion I've had the least experience with from this whole engine over here, so I kind of want to give this one more time to let it settle. For right now, let's call it a 4 out of 5 with the potential for the Pirates expansion to move this one up because I've definitely enjoyed playing with this and the additional elements that it provides. That's basically going to be my review of Austria. As far as other game recommendations, first of all, if you looking for a game that has another Moncala-ish mechanism, I highly recommend Five Tribes. It's out of print, not the easiest to get your hands on it, but Five Tribes is a delightful game that gives you a different way that you're playing Moncala as you drop off little meeples to go ahead and trigger a variety of actions in the game and get your hands on, well, everything. And then past that, a game that felt similar to Austria for me is Concordia. The kind of the general puzzle of trying to do everything because everything affects everything. You're trying to build buildings, get ships, move around the board. It very much had vibes of Concordia to me, but with an entirely different selection, uh, action selection system that drives the game, a lot of different ways it resolves, but it hits a lot of the same notes as Concordia. If you're looking for a kind of a next step game from Austria, a game that gives you a lot of the same feelings, elements, but has a lot more going on to think about and process, I highly recommend checking out Concordia from Matt Gertz. In any case, until next time, I'm Alex Radical from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.